Hi everybody, we are back now with the second part of the development diaries. Today we are going to meet the person who is behind the story and the dialogues and we'll also learn more about the predecessor of the Shadows called Hearty Kingdoms. There really is only one right person to talk to about cult, and it's Chris Bateman from International Hobo. Chris is the author of Cult Heretic Kingdoms, Dispold Noir, Ghostmaster and Shadows Heretic Kingdoms 2. Unfortunately, because of his workload and the huge geographic distance, he wasn't able to join us in person, so instead he will join us with Skype. Chris, I know it has been very difficult for you to join us due to your workload and new baby, so we appreciate at least the virtual opportunity to talk to you. Can you tell us more about your role in Cult and the connection between Cult and Shadows? Hello, uh, it's good to be with you today. Um, as you say, my name is uh, Chris Bateman. Uh, I um, was the game designer and writer on Cult Heretic Kingdoms and i am also uh, worked on the design team and uh, the narrative lead and the, uh, the script writer for the new game, Shadows Heretic Kingdoms. Uh, ten years ago when we made uh, Cult, I was running International Hobo, uh, a games design and narrative consultancy for the video games industry. And although I still consult with International Hobo, I now also have a split career. I also uh, work as an academic. Um, just a few weeks ago, I was uh, awarded a doctorate on um, the aesthetics of play of games and video games. I think I'm the first person in the world to uh, receive a PhD uh, in that topic. Is there a direct connection between Cult and Shadows? Is this a sequel? Well, the new game is set in the same world, but it's not a direct sequel. Uh, we've got different central characters, uh, although many of the old faces in Cult return. Uh, fans of the first game will enjoy the connections between the two games, but new players can come to it uh, as an entirely new game. It's more like Cult is a prequel to Shadows than Shadows is a sequel to Cult, if you see what I mean. What kind of fantasy world is the Heretic Kingdoms? What would you compare it to? Well, the, the fantasy genre tends to go down one of two lines. So on the one hand, you've got uh, epic high fantasy, uh, like Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. It tends to have good versus evil and a quest structure. Um, and then on the other hand, you've got uh, sword and sorcery, which tends to be darker, um, more focused on the characters. Um, and it draws from sources like Robert E. Howard's Conan, uh, Fritz Leiber's Fafir and the Grey Mauser series, or Morcock's Eternal Champion, of which the anti-hero Elric is probably the most famous character. In fact, uh, Morcock coined the term sword and sorcery to describe these kinds of stories. And both Cult and Shadows are definitely sword and sorcery. It's hard to tell if anyone is really a good guy in these games. And what are the influences on the Heretic Kingdom settings? Well. As a sword and sorcery world, uh, it draws heavily from uh, sources I already mentioned, like Liber and Moorcock, and I'm especially influenced by Moorcock's work. However, the Heretic's Kingdom setting always had a strong element of necromancy and immortality at a price, uh, which are themes more common in horror settings, or uh, perhaps in the evil side of high fantasy. Uh, a lot of this trickles down through Dungeons and Dragons, which first combined high fantasy and sword and sorcery elements into one single setting, and it's been hugely influential in the history of games. When you say Dungeons and Dragons has been influential, do you mean just for RPGs? No, no, not just for RPGs, and certainly not just for tabletop games. Uh, almost every video game around today has elements of D&D in it. Whether we're talking about uh, character advancement mechanics, uh, which can now be found in everything from Call of Duty to Farmville, uh, or the idea of a game with a central character that the player takes control on and influences a, uh, a fictional world. Um, the, uh, the whole concept of an avatar arguably goes back to Dungeons and Dragons. One of the unusual elements of Cult was the dream world. Can you say a little about how this has changed for Shadows? Well, in Cult, uh, the dream world was a parallel dimension that you could switch into to gain various tactical advantages in combat. And that all remains in, in Shadows. However, the world of dreams has been corrupted and demons are escaping from the hell dimension known as Shattered Heaven. It's a much more dangerous place than it was in the first game. Uh, we also have uh, some travel to other dimensions in Shadows, although I can't really say too much about that at this stage. 
Chris, thanks for your time. It was great to hear from you. And now let's go back to the studio and meet Peter Hornack. So now we are back in our studio and uh, right next to me is Peter, who's going to show us something more about the Shadows Heretic Kingdoms. Hi, my name is Peter. I'm head of scripting and I'm very glad to show you the beginning of the game. At the start of the Shadows Heretic Kingdoms, the devourer can choose which soul to consume. Thus the player can select from the first three main characters, Kalik, Jasker and Evia. Each of them is unique and radically different, not only in skills and combat style, but also in personality and dialogues. Furthermore, each character has their own personal quest throughout the entire game. So to accomplish all quests, you will need to play the game with each character. Player has two different forms at the beginning. Shadow form of the Devourer and Mortal War form. Three main souls can be selected Kalik, the bandit king of Thol, Evia, the daughter of fire, and the Jeska, the wild boar. Kalik, the bandit king of Thol, was urbed and murdered by his son Nemec for control of the Guild of the Steel, a powerful mercenary order in the Outlands. He is a melee character, skilled with two handed weapons and heavy armors. Evia is also known as the Daughter of Fire. Her mother was the last god empress of the Gerulian Empire. She was a renegade who tried to overthrow the Empire. She is a powerful magician skilled in several schools of magic. Jeska, the wild boar, is a legendary hero of Corwenth, who along with the house Malfagon overthrew the Theocrat in the Second Rebellion. He is skilled in the ranged combat. Later during the game, also other souls can be consumed. 14 different playable characters are placed throughout the game and only few of them are human. No two characters are alike. We are going to uncover much more about the characters on the website and in the diaries, so watch out. The jagged peaks stretch from the borders of Corwenth to the Eastern Ocean, a thousand leagues hence. The mountain range protects the northern borders of the wolf tribes of Temuria, but they rarely set foot in its passes. From the outlands to Temuria, only one route can safely be trod, Broken Spear Pass. Griffins roost high atop the craggy ridges and may fancy a lone traveler as an easy meal for their young. Worse horrors lurk in the dark places, unseen by any mortal eye. High in the pass stands a remote Temurian border camp. Few who are not of the wolf tribes pass beyond into the Temurian wilds. I could only trust in the ingenuity of my accomplices to gain admittance. So this is the end of these diaries, but in the next diaries we'll look more into the shadows, we'll talk about the Devourer and we will also introduce you to the early access build. Thanks for watching, comment it, like it and share it. Bye!